Ooh, well that drive was a mission. Anyone who lives in the northeast and travels to Scotland, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say camper vans and tractors on the A1. So three hours later, here I am at the mark. Well, not at the marker, at the car park of the mark. Uh, the weather forecast for this morning was uh, no wind and uh, to be picking up to an easterly, sorry, southeasterly later on uh, and possibly some rain. If I step out here, it's windy and you can see behind me the clouds. Enough of the morning, we're here now, so we're going to make the most of it. Uh, I'm coming to a mark that I haven't fished for a good number of years and today we're going to be uh, doing a bit of float fishing probably with a little bit of lure fishing mixed in but we've got about a half hour walk and then a pretty uh, pretty steep climb down to the shoreline so I'm going to get my bag packed up and uh, on my shoulder and uh, get a move on Just five minutes out of the car, it's raining already. Do have my waterproof swithers, but the problem is, is the rock turns like ice down here, so uh, I don't know, I don't know what to do. I'm gonna keep walking to the headland, and here comes the wind as well. Get to the headland and uh, make a decision from there. I made it down to the mark, well not the mark, <laughs> the descent of the mark, sorry. The rain has stayed off, I think. Gonna be alright for the moment, at least until I get down. That's the, uh, the main thing. It's a bit of a scramble. I mean, you can see the terrain around here is uh, it's not exactly easy going. I've only been here twice and the first time I didn't exactly know how to get down to it. I just looked on Google Earth and thought, oh that looks like a cracking place to go fishing. So I had to find my own way down and it it shitters up basically and uh, and that's even with 20 odd years of uh, alpine and rock climbing experience so but the last time I came I came equipped with a rope and uh, typically I found an easier way down well this is the uh, tricky bit problem is if you get wet then this rock is just lethal so I'm a bit worried about if it rains get my shoes a quick dry <laughs> It's only a short step, but it's awkward with uh, a couple of rods and a drone and everything else attached to your back. So the first time I came down, I came down through these overhangs here. And uh, <laughs> that's why it shit us up, basically. Because like I say, it's a long drop down to the water. Oh, it's gorgeous out of the wind. Oh, what's that? Oh, yeah. Someone actually put an abseil anchor at the top of this. And... Uh, <laughs> Ominously, there's the first attempt. Uh, here we are. This little rock. There's a bit of a swell coming through and it's due to pick up later in the day, but at the minute it seems to be coming from the southwest when it was meant to be a northerly. But this works out even better because, I mean, you can see down here there's, there's very little movement going. Tide's on its way in, it's nearly high tide. Uh, it's the top of the biggest tides of the month. Um, and at the minute I'm really sheltered from the wind as well because this big cliff behind me is uh, thin as a canny windbreak. Let's get a rod out and get a line in the water. What I'm going to do is set up a float on my usual uh, rock fishing or X bass rod which is a, a slash Lamia Thief 4 to 28 grams um, 
eight and a half foot rod and uh, a Daiwa free uh, BG mag sealed um, two and a half thousand size um, spinning reel. I've got 12 pound braid on that uh, but I've tied uh, 15 pound fluorocarbon or mono onto this so this uh, float can slide up and down me, uh, me line nicely without ruining my braid. So I've got a uh, really common, cheap, run-of-the-mill, slim float. All we're doing is stacking these on my main line, really. Uh, so there's my bead. Hands are still shaking from the adrenaline of the climb. Uh, there is the float. Now the instruction says to put the bead on next, but I prefer the bead to protect my knot against the swivel, so I'm actually going to put the lead on first. Who am I to say what, uh, what these guys know, but... That's a beauty with fishing, isn't it? Personal preference. And there we go. Quick and easy as that. Yeah, and that just slides up and down. The lead stays at the bottom, like that. And the float slides up to where you put the stopper nut, and that's how you control the depth. So I'm just tying on my uh, hook link there. This, uh, this line's 10 pounds, so it's five pounds lighter than my uh, main line. Now all that's left is to put a piece of bait on and uh, get it out there, see if we can't catch yourself a fish. There you go, one ragworm. Let's get this out. Oh, there's a gunnet. I'm gonna go. Gonna get it out, but not too far. I know there's a load of weed down here that you could probably see in the water. There we go, it's cocked. We're quite close to the bottom, because most of our fish, pollock, cod, wrasse, normally live around the bottom. Uh, mackerel, they, they'll go all the way through the water column but normally quite high and uh, bass are normally quite high in the water column as well so you have a shallower set for that. So enough talking let's sit back and, uh, and watch this. So I've been fishing this for about half an hour and I haven't really had any hit. Well I've had no hits actually. Um, as you can see from behind us Looks like I'm about to get wet as well, so uh, I'm going to put my waterproofs on in preparation for it because the temperature's dropping and the wind's picking up. The last thing I want to do is get a uh, hypothermia. Hopefully it's just going to be a passing shower, but uh, even if it is, it looks <laughs> it looks pretty wet. Like that. 20 minutes later, it's, uh, it's over. So fingers crossed that was the last of it, or the worst of it. Let's have a change of scenery and try and fish out in the uh, the open water. not really bringing as much joy as it probably test can tell so I think uh, I'm just gonna keep going until I run out of bait and then uh, chip on the metal and start the way fishing what I know best but uh, normally if you were gonna catch you would catch with float fishing because you're using bait and bait yeah, can be more productive than lures but uh, is, I think. Well, there's nothing going on here either, so uh, let's go and try the other side of the gully. Well, I think this is probably the key, or it could be the key if, uh, if you're not getting something in one place, just keep moving around and eventually you'll find something. Well, looks like we're in for a bit more rain. Just checked the forecast and uh, it's looking like rain for the rest of the day, so I'm going to bail now while I can get out and, and the rock's still dry. You can 
can see what's coming, so let's get going. I think the last time I spoke to you was when I uh, was basically running away from the rain. There was a massive cloud coming, and when I checked the forecast, it said that it was pretty much going to be like that all day or for the rest of the evening. And I thought, well, maybe had one bite in five hours and uh, it's only going to get more difficult to climb out if the rain carries on. So I thought what I would do is uh, <clears throat> start driving home, basically, and maybe pass a couple of my other, other areas that I go fishing in. And uh, I'm here at one now and, it, well, it's sunny. I'm going to, yeah. Drink this coffee, get red up to go. It's got about a 10 or 15 minute walk and then another cliff to scramble down. And uh, I will see us at the bottom. And then we're gonna get a fish, even just one. I'll take a tiny coli. All right, let's get this show on the road. Oh. Oh, I love the smell after a good downpour when it's been dry for ages. It's not so fresh. Yeah, you can see what's just blown through here with that rainbow. See the showers coming down, that looks brilliant. Skylark up there. Oh. Here we go. Oh, the smell of guano is uh... I was saying earlier how I like the fresh smell of rain, but oh, that's not that's not a nice smell at all. Oh, it's all over these rocks. There's a close-up for you. <laughs> Definitely making sure I've got three points of contact on this. Stuff my boots into all the cracks. Must be fish down here, surely. <laughs> Don't know what I'll do if I get a big fish, but I'll uh, cross that road when we we'll come to it. If we we'll come to it. Well, looks like the uh, British forecast could be wrong again. That uh, big cloud over there it's got really dark and cold and that's blowing this way. So much for sunshine for the rest of the night. We've got a sneaking suspicion that there's either no fish about or uh, it's just too rough here for, or rough anywhere for, uh, for float fishing at the moment. I'm starting to think that because of the, uh, the float bouncing so much, not, not getting a good presentation basically. You know, the worm will be up and down, up and down, up and down, but maybe it's just too early. Maybe we have had, sounds like you're making loads of excuses now, but we have had the, uh, the coldest April uh, in a hundred years and the water temperature is still only about eight degrees, so I'm thinking the fish are probably still a little further offshore, so I'm going to give this 10 more minutes and then I'm going to uh, wrap it up and get a, get a metal on. See if I can save the day and get a fish on the shore. Right, so I've just tied my uh, favourite cheap metal on and that's the, uh, the Razor Claw Silver Minnow. It's got shit hooks and I don't normally use them but I don't have anything to replace them with so I'm just going to crush the barbs because I'm unlikely to keep any of the fish that I catch if, if I catch but uh, yeah, it makes a nice change from sitting there with uh, a float out Alright, let's get this out
Don't lose it, I'm on barbless. Oh yes! Oh, I think I might have come off. Oh! Oh! Oh, no way! Son of a... Right on cue! Got a fish! Don't let it come off, it's, I've got barbless hooks! Bang! Off it goes! Oh! Devastated! What's the time? It's 10 to 7. That's uh, 8 hours of fishing. Come on, still that's a hook, hooked up fish. Let's go! Check out the rainbow. Good to see, but I think there's more rain on the way. Damn! Well that rain's coming straight for us, so I'm going to quickly smash out a few more casts and I'm done. It's been, uh, it's been a long day and uh, there's been, as you've seen, very little fish. Just one on the end there, but the lures on the bottom. One on the end and I don't want to get caught in that. Still got a couple of hours to get home as well, so it's at least 10 o'clock. By the time I get back, uh, I need some tea. Uh, I'll think of some more excuses. I need a beer as well after today, so uh, I smash out a couple more casts and then I'm going to do one. Oh yes! Come on, last cast fish. Feels like a canny one as well. Oh, it's fighting. Oh, I think it's a cod. Oh, Jesus. Oh, it's in the bottom. It's in the snags. Come on up. Next thing is just how to get it out though. Out the water without a net. Come on, come on. Yes, yes. It's not on the shore yet, but yes. You absolute beauty! Woo. It's barbless, so it should hopefully come straight out. There we go. Get him back. This uh, is a bit of a kelpie cod, you can tell by the dark orange colour and they're not as nice eating as the fresh lighter cod, so... Head first. Straight away. <laughs> and I was just saying I'm going to bash out the last couple of casts. Time for another cast, I reckon. Come on! Oh! Oh, I felt... I felt good. Well, I'm at the top. It's, uh, it's been a long day, really happy for uh, getting a fish though, keeping the blank, or saving the blank, I can kind of string a sentence together. Not a bad view for the end of it, just thought of something cheesy, see where that rainbow ends, that's pretty much where I caught my cod. 
Nah. <laughs> Delirious with happiness after catching that fish. Why didn't I put the float away earlier? It's been a good day. It's been a uh, long time coming. I had one session on the rocks really so far this season and uh, we've normally normally had a lot by now. Just want to say thank you to everyone who's joined the channel recently. I've had some some amazing support and growth. I hope I can uh, keep your expectations fulfilled with uh, the future videos. Still out of breath from running up that cliff. If you haven't already subscribed then hit that su subscription button and the little bell as well so you know when the next video gets posted and uh, even if you don't want to subscribe just uh, watch my next video that'll be great one thing as well um, that fish that I put back it was cleanly hooked with barbless hooks and I get some comments from people who say you need better fish care but when, when the fish is re-entering the water or when I'm putting the fish back because I, I tend to torpedo most of my fish and the reason why I do that is because um, I, we always go back we always swim off when I first started lure fishing or when I, a couple of years after I started it I was catching some pretty nice pollock and taking the best care I could and laying them in the water and you know doing what I'd call a carp release really and uh, they just wouldn't go back and I saw the Australian guys especially with GTs they, and Americans with uh, Jack Creval they uh, torpedo them back head first or it has to be head first and they always swim away and I was watching uh, a great channel you've, you've probably all heard of it to be honest but a great channel the other day called the fish locker and john was saying the same thing you know if, if the fish is still pretty green then torpedo it back because it actually gives a really good rush of uh, oxygenated water to the gills and it, i don't know an allergy might be like it's getting a defib or a shot of adrenaline and uh, they always swim back so all those people who say I should be carp releasing 10 years of releasing pollock and uh, coddling say otherwise give it a go it's me little rant over oh and that channel as well John's uh, the fish locker he's recently surpassed 200,000 subscribers which is it's immense for a British uh, fishing channel especially because he only started what, in 2018 or 2019 I can't remember but I've been going a long time and uh, I haven't even got that you know in the double digits of a percentage close to him so congratulations John you deserve it mate long may it continue